Hello everyone and welcome to the Finding and Using Sources workshop and in this case it's a uh, online recorded version of the workshop and so uh, one thing that I just want to note um, up front about the way this works is a lot of it resembles the uh, workshop that you went through in fall quarter and it just has a, um, a, a couple of, of slightly different approaches but also of course it's going to be unique to the assignment that you're working on at this point and the approaches that you're going to be taking with it. So uh, you can pause the video at any point that you want to in order to uh, to do activities, take notes, whatever makes sense to you. Uh, but also, I have broken it out into separate videos so that you have a little bit more agency going to the parts of it where you want to focus more and, and, and have a little bit more control over how you're going to be approaching this. Uh, I will have some points where I suggest that you, you pause the video as well and uh, and um, be talking through some of those parts. And then, um, of course, uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that because uh, the, the overall inquiry process, the research uh, reading and writing process is a social process, as I mentioned in previous workshops, uh, keep in mind that you do have uh, people that you can be contacting as you're working through this. Uh, that, that includes myself and also the folks in the research and writing studio and of course your classmates and instructor as well. So let's uh, go ahead and move forward and uh, let's, uh, what I want to start out with is uh, taking a moment to revisit your inquiry question and your sub questions. And the reason for this is because now that you've had some time to sort of um, gestate, so to speak, on your ideas and, and uh, had that time to kind of let them uh, exist in your subconscious, now's a good time to come back to them and um, have some fresher eyes and, and taking a look at it. So um, as has been mentioned before, um, oftentimes uh, you're going to be re revising your inquiry question, your PICO question, and your sub questions uh, over time, and that's a perfectly natural thing to be doing. So that that's something that I encourage you to do at this point uh, to take a moment, pause the video, get that inquiry question, those sub questions out because we're going to be working from them. And if they need any tweaks, now's a good time to do that. And so uh, the reason why um, we're going to be doing this, this is where we're going to hopefully end up today. This is sort of the abstract model for it. And you've seen this before with the previous workshops, but just to kind of revisit what it's about, uh, we want to get to the point where you have sources that are going to be speaking to your sub questions in the most effective way possible. And those ways in which the sources speak to your sub questions, those are again, those rhetorical moves. It's the types of things that they do in order to uh, provide evidence for your sub questions so that eventually your sub questions become, can become sub claims and you can be making Making those claims in the way that you want to be making them or you can know how you need to modify your claims in order to make the most effective uh, claims possible so uh, a, a way of thinking about this is the uh, the dinner party uh, type approach uh, to, th to thinking about it where you could say well you know uh, the green source uh, speaks to a couple of these sub questions but how would the green source be speaking to the yellow source how would it be speaking to the orange source differently uh, and how in turn after I have those sources that are speaking to the sub question and sometimes I might have lots of them like the the four of them where there's a purple a gray a red and a yellow uh, and in other cases I might just have the one but how are they going to be speaking to the sub questions and then those sub, -que sub questions in turn speaking to the inquiry question so that that inquiry question is going to become a thesis statement and so I'm going to be working towards uh, the most effective paper I can uh, in writing a, uh, a strong thesis statement. And the same goes for um, a poster when you're putting the poster together. So in order to, to get started with thinking about the types of information you needs you have and finding those sources to speak to the sub questions, that's where we want to move into the rhetorical moves and talking about the types of sources you're going to need and and trying to figure that out. So let's take a moment to define some of the rhetorical moves. There's a link to a rhetorical moves handout that you can be using as well, uh, but these slides describe it in a little bit uh, more detail with examples. So um, starting out with the first of the three rhetorical moves, there is grounding. And you have a reading for this course where uh, it, it talks about a lot of these same ideas, uses slightly different terminology and a slightly different approach, but it's essentially the, the same types of ideas. And so whichever model ends up working best for you, then uh, that's perfectly great to be going with um, either one of those. But with grounding, uh, it's situating a claim within a particular context, right? So there's defining, that one's pretty straightforward, uh, how a scholar defines a particular uh, concept 
and you put that forward. There's framing, so in this case it's uh, saying something where we could say historically scholars have examined a particular concept through a particular lens or a th theoretical framework so that we're actually kind of putting that forward as a, a, how a, an idea has been approached. It could be illustrating as well where in this case we're saying we can look to scholar D who illustrates many of the complexities embedded in concept X. And so they, they, it's something that kind of gives life to a particular idea or it could be authorizing where it's uh, we might be saying scholar C echoes, echoes what I've argued for saying that and then you can have the, the uh, quote or the paraphrase of the claim that you would be using in that particular instance. Now the second of the three rhetorical moves is forwarding and that's extending or repurposing the ideas or expertise of others between contexts. And so this is where it's a little bit trickier and it's something that's um, a, a slightly more difficult uh, task for us uh, people who are, are researching and writing and reading into expertise rather than writing and researching and reading from expertise. So as undergraduates, um, a lot of you are still uh, working on, uh, on developing your, your voice in terms of scholarship re related to nursing. So sometimes it can feel a little bit awkward to be um, doing some of these moves, but they're very valuable things to be doing in the process of scholarship. And so uh, just to illustrate a few of those, there's borrowing. So so although Scholar C exclusively focused on, and there's an original context that you can say the same idea can be applied to, and then you have a new context for that particular uh, issue. Uh, it could be extending an idea. So you could be saying, while I agree with Scholar A's main premise, I would argue that uh, A does not go far enough, and, that, and then you would be inserting your new idea there. So you looked at their evidence, and you have come to um, yet another idea from it that maybe they didn't describe themselves. Uh, or it could be synthesizing, where you, in this case it's scholars A, B, and C offer similar insights, scholars D and E go against the grain, and scholar F offers an entirely new explanation. Taking these valuable perspectives collectively, I conclude that, and then you offer your own unique and new perspective. And, uh, and synthesizing is oftentimes one of the trickier ones of those three to be doing. You don't need to have all that, as many sources as I have, as I have in that example. It could just be uh, two sources, but it is that process where you really bring in two new sources to uh, gain new perspectives. And then there is countering, uh, which can sometimes take place within the other rhetorical moves, as uh, we kind of saw that there was a, a countering activity taking place in that synthesizing example a moment ago. But that's presenting alternative perspectives or uncovering gaps in others' views. So that could be borrowing, where although Scholar C exclusively focused on and has a particular idea, Scholar A seems to have overlooked, and then you're presenting an, an alternative perspective. Or it could be uncovering values. So if Scholar A and B had also taken, and then you put a gap in thinking into consideration, they may have reached a, a different conclusion. So those are the rhetorical moves, and, and they're good to be keeping in mind in terms of what kind of information sources you might need. But there are also different types of information sources, and they can speak to your sources in different ways. And they relate to the rhetorical moves, uh, but it, they're more about the sort of the format type of the source that you're going to need. And so if you think about your sub-questions, and you are thinking about the things that you need from your sources, are those going to be best addressed with a peer-reviewed research article, uh, so something where it's gone through that rigorous process and it's kind of the gold standard of, uh, of academic scholarship. Uh, it, it might also be something where it's coming from a professional source, the professional organizations or a government source, and it has some authority in, the, in those senses uh, as well because it has the expertise and, uh, of those organizations or the governments behind it. Uh, might it be also be a course reading? So there could be some course readings that you would be um, bringing into the mix as well as part of your, your overall writing process. Uh, another example of something might be a primary source. So a primary source, uh, which is good to, to make sure to not confuse with um, uh, primary research, where primary research is uh, something where it is generating something that is eventually a primary source, but a primary research um, becomes a peer-reviewed uh, journal article in most instances or um, other research type um, 
uh, products. But um, other primary sources that you might be considering are uh, things like, say, patient testimonials or uh, nursing pra pra uh, a nurse who is um, actually practicing their testimonials around a particular issue. Uh, so those would all be primary sources because they are they're coming directly, like they're the most elementary source of information you could have. Uh, it could be data on a topic. So uh, um, you know, it could be very um, specific uh, information that was gathered through focus groups or through interviews, but it has not been interpreted yet. Those would be primary sources. Uh, it might also be an expert um, as well. So somebody who really knows what they're talking about um, and it's not something necessarily that has to be written down. You just have to keep in mind that how you use those can um, really vary because uh, you want to be careful about um, uh, using something where you basically can't direct your reader to the evidence that you're going to be providing because unless it's been recorded, you're not going to be able to do that. And of course, you're going to be want, wanting to follow the assignment guidelines as a uh, part of this overall process. So now is a good time to, um, to stop and um, this video will end, but uh, take the time to examine your sub questions and determine what moves your sources are ideally going to make and to answer those questions. And the Green and Lindinsky chapter that, um, that you have, uh, those worksheets that are in there the, that are in the figures uh, sections, those are excellent templates to, to use for this activity. So I definitely uh, would recommend considering using those or adaptations of those uh, within uh, this type of an activity. And any sources that you already have, it's good to kind of identify identify what kind of rhetorical moves they are already making and how they speak to your sources so that you're going to be able to move forward and figure out the gaps that you still have in terms of finding sources and the sources that are going to be most effective on your topic.